spring shaped yeah, yeah, heads. Yeah. So they actually, mm. their heads had like either a triangle, straight up triangle shaped head, very weird, mm. um, or kind of more boomerang shaped. And so, uh, what's it called again? A diplocollis. And it's 286 million years old. It's one of the early amphibians um, from the Permian period. So like, here's his head right here. And this is one of the little horns on the side. Basically, he's facing that way. You can see uh, amphibians and reptiles have this kind of like dimpled pattern on their skulls and in some of their other bones and stuff. So here's like the left side of his head. There's the little horn that comes out. The, he would have had another one over here, which probably got bitten off or something. Oh. Somebody probably ate him. Oh. There was probably also a little bit more coming out here. But like I said, he probably got <laughs> eaten. Yeah, because they would bury into the mud and then the big predators would come along and snip into the mud. And mm. so you actually find a lot of these guys with their noses bit off and oh. then they'd oh. like die in their little, oh, <laughs> in their yeah. little homes. Very yeah, very sad. Um, and then you can actually see more, like mm -hmm. this is a vertebra. And so yes. the vertebrae goes all the way down. Here's more of his spine. It comes all the way down here. So his body occurs kind of that way. Yeah, mm -hmm. all of these little bones, let me get out of the sun. Let's see better. So these little bones right here, and those little bones right there, those are all rib bones. Mm -hmm. So you can actually see his his rib bones right there. I think there's there should be leg bones in there somewhere, but I haven't gotten that far yet. And then it's actually really funny. They had these long tails and um, somewhere in here is this tail and because the spine comes all the way around and then the tail wraps all the way back up and you can actually see a couple of the tail bones back up in here. Oh, okay. So his tail comes and wraps all the way back around mm -hmm. up to there underneath him. Mm. So that's it. The little yeah, cool. How long have you been working on it? Um, well, I took it, I worked on it a little bit at home, but I actually haven't had that much time to work on it. Um, what do you do? You just like excavate them? Mm -hmm. And how do you know how, like, how big do you, can you, you, did you leave them in the ground until you knew, like, what it was and then you yeah, figured so, out what size you needed? Yeah, so when, uh, basically the, the way it works is, um, when we first found this, uh, we were we were out digging on a site that had dimetrodons in it, and so we were working on the dimetrodons, and there was a wall that we were kind of going back in. And as we dug, as I was digging down, I was digging, and I found like this little piece right here in the edge of the wall, and I was like, "Oh my God, it's a boomer!" <laughs> so we call them boomers for short, boomerang heads. Mm -hmm. um, so I knew that I had That's a diplocallis awesome. right away, and so I brought the wall down a little bit and then um, most of this was all done in the lab because when you're out in the field you just don't have control over mm -hmm. anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So once we found this and I kind of dug down a little bit until I was able to see sort of where the edges were. Um, so this part was all in the wall and so once I was able to see kind of how big he was and we know about how big they are based mm -hmm. on how big the head was. Um, and then you just kind of dig out a wide berth around it. Mm -hmm. And so this was all flat and I dug out a trench all the way around and then you kind of trench underneath and there's always the possibility that you're gonna hit something else, but mm -hmm. there's not much you can do about it. So once yeah. you dig a trench all the way around, then what we do is we put a plaster cast around it in the ground outside. So we take the plaster and mix it up um, and take burlap um, burlap sack mm -hmm. and dip the burlap in there and then you plaster around the edge and it really creates this um, we call it a jacket a plaster jacket mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then that allows you to kind of just break it out yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, you put the cap all the way around <laughs> and then you can transport it a little bit more safely into the lab and then work mm -hmm. on it there with microscopes and all that good stuff. <laughs> so you made a sculpture actually, because that's what you do to make sculptures. Say no. This is not my art so much. <laughs> it is now. I, I remember a number of years ago there was a dimetrodon that was being um, like excavated in a museum in the woodlands. Um, 
and now that same skeleton is up in the um, HMNS. Yes. Does this have anything to do with that? Was it from the same site by any chance? Or it... <laughs> yeah, it actually was. Yeah? That's <laughs> yeah. so cool. Nice. Um, nice. So the Houston <laughs> Museum, the the guy that runs the museum up in North Texas now worked for HMNS at the time. Okay. Um, back when I was in Houston, that's how we met. Okay. And um, we ended up going to Seymour to start this museum and run it, and they were building it and they needed people to curate it, so we were up there doing that. Um, that specimen is named Willie. <laughs> Okay, and yeah, they've been working on Willie for a while. Yeah, um, I remember when I was younger, my mom would always take me to the museum and we'd watch it, like, watch the paleontologists dig it up and stuff. Yeah, that's and so it was, it uh, was really cool seeing site. it, like, move so, to the HMNS and everything. Yeah, that that's one, awesome. I'm trying to think, it's, like, right there in the same quarry. It was wow. probably found, that one that you're talking about was probably mm -hmm. found about 50 feet away from this little guy. So. That's incredible. Came from, <laughs> came from the same place. How long have you been working on it? Um, I found found this like two or three years ago or something like that. So it's been a long time, but I haven't been steadily working on it because we've had so many other projects because we've been looking at new sites and everything. And so it hasn't hasn't had a lot of hours in the lab, but he just hangs out in your trunk. <laughs> well, they they let me borrow it so I can work on it a little bit um, at home, but I didn't have that much time to do it. So, but. Even when you put hours and hours into it, most of this is done with like tiny little dental picks and like actually Precious. just Q-tips that are mm. working in acetone to like clean off the glue that we use in the field and everything. So wow. it goes very slow. Wow. Wow. Okay. So what kind of, so this is not the first boomer that's been dug up. No. Um, what do you learn from each one? Like what? What's the thing? Um. It depends. That's kind of the you don't know interesting you thing about it. You Same never know what you're going to learn um, mm -hmm. until you really get it out and look at it. It could be it could be that you get it out and realize that maybe it's a different species. Maybe it's completely different. Maybe the body is different. Maybe the joints are different than some of the other ones you've had before. Or uh, maybe it's the way that it was in the ground. A lot of it is the composition of how it was actually found in the ground and we mm -hmm. do mapping and everything. So this was all mapped into the quarry before we took it out. We do all kinds of mapping, photography, um, make sure that we know where every little piece came from. And so when you look at the big picture, the whole bone bed, you can see uh, all the bones are, oh, they're all kind of like facing this one direction. There was maybe a water element that was creating um, this channel of how the bones are facing so it gives you a little bit more information about the environment that they were in because we know these guys yeah. lived in the water That's so super cool. yeah. you know more about the environment more about the yeah is that like that the average size for that thing um i think this guy's a little small he's not mm -hmm. i've seen like so this head is you know yay big but when I was in uh, New York for Frankie, actually, I went to the museum up there and they have a lot of specimens from our quarry there at the New York Museum. Yeah. And um, we had a friend up there and, that Chris hooked me up with. And so he showed me some of the other stuff that was found from the quarry. Yeah. And there were heads that were Whoa. <laughs> they were huge and ridiculous. Whoa. And I was just like, oh my God. <laughs> um, so the ones that we're finding are a little bit smaller right now but um there's definitely bigger ones out there <laughs> where's the quarry at it is up in seymour texas it's just outside of the town of seymour actually on a private ranch what is that close to it is exactly halfway between lubbock and fort worth <laughs> makes sense it's an so hour middle of nowhere. <laughs> out, yeah <laughs> middle of nowhere it's an hour south of wichita falls wow. so there's yeah. a museum there and you can go visit right yes there's a museum there it's a little tiny museum and it is actually <laughs> Probably, it is in the best um, Permian quarry, probably in the world. I would say, cool. um, especially nice. we so cool. have newer uh, newer land that we've been looking at. All the landowners are kind of getting on board now, mm -hmm. so they've been letting us go out there a lot more. Wow. And we found an entire an entire we call it Daffy Valley. There's another big big man, um, reptile that's a herbivore and um, they roamed in herds. And we actually can tell that now because we found a huge site that has all kinds of ages of, um, hmm. a 
of the uh -huh. adapasaur out cool. there. So we're there's all kinds of new stuff that we're finding, but yeah, it's Super just on cool. private private land out there. What do you think of the the Glen Rose area where they have all of those dinosaur fossils as well? That is a completely different time period. Okay. So that is very cool. Um, I haven't been there since I was a kid, actually. But um, yeah, that I think Glen Rose excursion maybe yeah, next time. Glen Rose is more uh, Cretaceous, I believe. Okay. So the Cretaceous was sixty-five million years ago versus this is two hundred and eighty million years Got ago. It. So <laughs> this was way way yeah. older than a dinosaur this is pre-dinosaur do you specialize in a certain period or do you guys just kind of well now i anything? specialize in the permian because that's <laughs> what i have most of my uh experience in at this point okay. yeah. i definitely know the permian better than anything else yeah. <laughs> if they're not dinosaurs what are they called just amphibians uh it depends on <laughs> who you ask <laughs> I'm asking. Um, you. for yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For different different kinds of animals will have different names. Like this one is just a early amphibian, basically is all we would call it. Um, for the um, for the edaphosaur and the dimetrodon, the one I talked about earlier with the big fin on it, those we call pelicosaurs. Um, because of the way that their chest is shaped, they have this very specific um, clavicle or this inner mm. clavicle that is a breastplate that looks kind of like a gourd or like a mm. cup of some sort. It kind of looks oh. like that. And um, it goes right down in the front and uh, that kind of gives it its name, Pelicosaur there. But mm. yeah, so nothing really sticks quite as well as dinosaur for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody knows dinosaurs. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, you said that this thing was found in the mud a lot, or it would like hide in the mud and then get eaten out. Is it more predisposed to becoming fossilized because of that, or do we probably maybe? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's actually a really, uh, really good point. Um, anything that lives in, or around, or dies in those kind of um, yeah, it's the sedimentary like mm -hmm. river areas but usually right. whenever it's um, not as fast flowing whenever it's um, mm -hmm. just more kind of chill makes sense mm -hmm. yeah that it's a really good really 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 good climate to be able to become fossilized for sure yeah fossilization's hard <laughs> That's yeah what is cool. horns are for yeah we're not sure. Um, that's actually something that we're we're not sure of. Because in my head, he looks like a little dragon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Like a he is dragon. kind of an a hammerhead dragon. dragon. I don't yeah. know what he looks like at all. Um. Yeah. Well, he was a, he was a carnivore. He did eat little fish and everything. Oh, wow. Um. So. How did you find that out? Are they carnivores? Their teeth. We can see it from their teeth. Mm. They have little little sharp teeth. Baby dragon, I got it. Yeah, baby, 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 dragon. baby, baby river dragon, nice. basically. A water dragon. He's a water, water dragon. dragon. It's a, and the the horns may have done anything from who knows camouflage to make them more aerodynamic in the water or mating, mating and yeah, it could have been like sexual dimorphism, something like that. There's all kinds of theories. Cool. Yeah. Thank nice. you so much. Thank yeah. you, Mallory! Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. This is so cool. Yeah, so I thought yeah. I'd share it because it's going back to the museum now. <laughs> I love it. <laughs>